Hi everyone, I'm Professor Casey, and welcome to Quick Review 4. This is on using the code blocks debugger. The first and most very important thing that you have to remember about using the debugger is that you have to set your file up inside of a code blocks project. So if you've gotten in the bad habit of setting up just a file, not a project, just a C file, uh, you're gonna have to get back into the habit of setting up a project in order to use the debugger. I'm going to highly encourage you to understand how to use the debugger before we get to practicum three. This will help you immensely. And I think it would have helped some of you on practicum two as well. So uh, hopefully we can get this ingrained as a behavior that you can really understand. I wanna make sure you understand from the very, very beginning to the very, very end, all the steps involved in using the debugger. So let's get started. Okay, so here I have an example called using debugger. <laughs> That's not really what the program does. The program checks to see if you have an even or an odd variable entered. And just as a bonus here, I've also included the do while error check because we saw in the other error check video, the just the while loop. So I included how to do the do while error check in this loop as well. Okay, so if we look through this program, just super quick, define some variables. I'm doing a for loop. I've already set that I'm gonna enter 10 or less numbers. I could have them enter this ahead of time, but I just wanted to do a, something really, really quick. Inside of that, right, this whole chunk right here, all of that together is the error check. So I asked them to enter a number. We scan in that number. As long as it's scanned in correctly, right, I let them go on. If it didn't, if they entered a character, we're gonna clear that out, right? You can use that flush or git char and have them re-enter it. Now I could also specify they have to enter a number less than 50 or whatever. And I would do that in this condition and this condition, these two have to match. Assuming they enter it correctly, it goes down to even check. Okay, where I use a modulo and I see if it uh, has a remainder when we divide it by two. So if it has a remainder of zero, we know that it's even. So we can count even and print that the number is even. If it has a remainder that's not zero, we tell it that it's odd and print out that the number is odd. So this is a really, really simple program. I've also added a quick min and max in here um, just for illustrative purposes so we can see the variables change in the debugger. And at the very end, I print out the total even, the total odd, and then the minimum and the maximum of all of them. So fairly simple. Um, but the real purpose here is to use a debugger. So I'm gonna assume that you started off incorrectly. This is in a just a .c file. And in order to work, we have to actually put this into a project. So maybe you started off as a project. If you did, you can skip this part. If you didn't, you need to do this. So I just copied and pasted the whole program. And here's how you actually start. You go to file, new, whoops, and project. We're gonna do a console application, make sure it's in C. And I'm gonna call this using the debug demo. And yeah, that's fine, okay. All right, and then I can see, oh yes, it actually worked, it's over here. I have some individual C files up, but what I really want is the main file that's sourced to my project. This is what's actually gonna compile when I compile this project. I take out everything that's in there and I paste in what I actually want, which is this, and then I have to save it in order for it to actually run. Whenever you have the little asterisk there, that means it needs to be saved. Okay, so now this is inside a project and this project is active. That's how I know I can use the debugger on this main.c here. Okay. The very, very first step in using the debugger is setting a breakpoint. This is very simple. I usually do this after I've declared all my variables. Otherwise, there's a lot of unnecessary clicking. You click over in the darker gray area. I'm gonna put mine in line 14 and you'll get this little stop sign looking octagon. That's a breakpoint. You can set multiple breakpoints. I usually only set one for these type of simple programs. And then after I've built it and made sure that everything's working, I don't have any weird or random errors like semicolons or something. Once I have all these errors and warnings taken care of, I know I can start my debug. Now you can debug with errors and warnings to try and figure out what you did wrong. 
but I'm just trying to illustrate what's actually happening in the computer and how to use this. So we set our breakpoint, then we click the debug option. If you get an error down here that says debug not loaded, you need to go to your settings, you need to go to debugger, and then when you click default, this executable path should look exactly like mine. So you go to programs, x86, code blocks, mingw, gdb32, and then bin. And what you actually have to click is the gdb32 executable file. You will know it's right because it says application if you can't see the exe. It must match that. So make sure it does. That's only, again, if you're on your home laptop and it's not working, you'll get some red down here in your debugger screen. Um, but for most of you, this should work fine. Once that happens, you'll see the breakpoint pop up and then you'll see this little yellow arrow. The little yellow arrow indicates what line you are actually on. Now, because I use a debugger all the time, my watches window already came up, but let's assume that it didn't, right? This is probably what your screen looks like. We well, wanna see the watches window. So you're gonna to go to the bug window, right? It's the debugging windows. And you're gonna click watches. It'll probably pop up in the middle for you. I like to drag mine over here. And you can see every single variable declared in my program. If you have an array, it will actually show every element of the array. You'll have to click plus next to it. And then what we can do is we can go line by line through this code. So if I click next line, you'll see this little yellow arrow jump. Okay, and it goes to the next thing where it can actually happen. You'll see all these turn black. When they're black, that means they haven't changed. If they're red, that means they recently changed. So now I also get my uh, command prompt window and you can see there's nothing in there yet. So I click next line. And if I look at my command prompt window, you can see it actually printed that printf statement. The only thing that's a little weird with code blocks and the debugger are scanfs. So I'm gonna show you what happens here. As soon as I click back, this window will go away, but hopefully it'll pop up in the same place. As soon as I click next, this little yellow arrow is actually gonna go away. I have to make that go away. That means it's waiting for me to enter something on this scanf. So now I have a blank cursor that's just blinking and I'll actually be able to enter something. So I'm gonna enter seven. Now, as soon as I just hit enter, you could see in the background, my watch has changed, right? Status went to one, it actually worked. The X variable I was scanning into went to seven. Now it's gonna check this if statement. I'll hit next line, that should be false. So it'll jump down to my while and we should be in the clear, we wanna jump out. So now we can watch these variables change as I go through my next few steps. So I can say, okay, even check is gonna be X modulo two. So what's that gonna to change to? It's gonna to change to one. So this if statement should be false, it jumps down. Else, right, is the other option. So I should see odd count increase here. And I should see a printf on my screen and I can double check. It did print the number is odd. Okay, I can also check min and max. Right, this was false, X isn't less than min. Min changed to seven. I set min, uh, min and max equal to zero. So that was kind of a cheater method for me, but. Okay, now I go back to the top. I hit next line. You can see my counter variable went from zero to one now. If I look at my screen, this is what it looks like before. As soon as I hit next line, I should see it. Please enter a number for X, okay. Now I'm at a scanf line, it won't let me enter anything, right? I can type all the numbers I want. It won't let me enter them until that little yellow arrow goes away on the scanf line. So hit next. Now you can see every number I just entered shows up here. So just be really careful about that. Now I enter a number for X. Okay, we should get false, right? Even check that number is indeed even. So I'm gonna count even and I'm gonna print even and I should get a change in my maximum there. Okay, so you can see as I keep clicking through these, all the variables change as we go through. I'm gonna enter another number. Um, let's say I enter something weird this time, let's say T. Okay, so now if I go to next line, 
this became true. So now I'm inside my if statement. And you can see, oh, it's gonna actually flush out whatever I just entered and let me redo it. Right, so it told me I had an input error and it's letting me re-enter. Okay, and it'll keep going. It knows it's even, it'll print that it's even and it'll keep calculating my min and max. The only thing this program doesn't cover is if you have a function and you can actually use the debugger on the function. As soon as you get to the line the function is called in, instead of doing next line, you actually hit step into. And step into will just jump down to the function and then you can keep, keep hitting next line until you're done with the function and then you hit step out. And you can go through your entire program just like your compiler would, just like your actual computer goes through and sees everything when it's analyzing it. This is really helpful if you're getting weird results. If I'm like, oh man, why is this if statement turning false when I don't want it to turn false and I don't think it should be? Or why is this while loop keep looping infinitely? What's not changing? And you can go through and actually see what's changing in the variables to make that if statement be false or make that while loop be true or whatever's happening that is not what you think should be happening. Okay, I hope that was valuable. There is also some more resources on using the debugger on the resources page on the syllabus. So if you go on the syllabus, that last page lists a bunch of web links. There are some really good resources on using the debugger that go more in depth if you need that. Feel free to watch those videos. They're not done by me, um, but they are good nonetheless. Thanks for tuning in to quick review number four for EGR 112. This is using the debugger. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, you can always contact me or you can leave a comment below. I do check them frequently. Again, I'm Professor Casey. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you learned something about using the debugger.